A very warm welcome to you as you join us on today's episode of Tax Matters. I'm Chamaka Ohauchi. Last episode, we brought you the first installment of the story of the 25th Annual Tax Conference. The conference was indeed an intellectual feast with several papers and panel sessions devoted to the theme of the conference. The first plenary session, which was the paper presentation on the conference theme, was chaired by Mr. Joseph Owolabi, Global President, Association of Certified Chartered Accountants, ACCA. Mr. Owolabi laid the solid foundation for the lead paper. There is a part to sustainable future that does include a fair system of taxation. When I mean a fair system of taxation, I imply that every economic active citizen and every business or corporate makes their contribution. And where there's full transparency and accountability on how government uses those tax revenues for the benefit of society at large. I'll go further and say that a healthy and fair taxation system is a sign of a healthy and fair society. Fairness is essential to the public good. You do not get economic prosperity and a sustainable development unless people share a basic commitment to that public good. It does not mean people will not grumble. I grumble when I pay 38% plus in Australia. It is human nature. And it does not mean that people do not see the point of tax. They do know why they are paying the taxes. As accountants and tax professionals, we need to operate with ethics by advising our clients on the reputational and practical risk associated with tax arrangements. The lead paper was presented by Mrs. Fatima Atairo, Deputy Country Resident, United Nations Development Programme Nigeria, on behalf of the Country Resident Representative. It is globally accepted that efficient and effective taxation is essential to sustainable development. As such, taxes are a potent instrument that can assist Nigeria in achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development provides a shared blueprint for peace and prosperity for the people and the planet. It is a universal call to action and to end poverty, to protect the planet and to ensure that people around the world enjoy peace and prosperity by 2030. It is estimated that Nigeria has a financing gap of 125 trillion naira, which is over $300 billion, to achieve the SDGs by 2030, which is barely seven years from now. What is the way forward? The current global challenges have sparked a rethink of the tax system. Although this is an arduous tax, it is our belief that Nigeria can address the Sustainable Development Goals through taxation by adopting measures to improve and modify behaviours to accomplish targeted development results. This tax includes building public trust in government institutions, strengthening tax compliance, reducing inequalities and disparities in wealth, promoting tax justice, which has become an essential issue with a growing recognition of the need for fair and equitable tax systems that can promote sustainable development and reduce poverty. Certainly, domestic resource mobilization, particularly through taxes, is essential to close the gaps. In conclusion, I hope that the outcome of the dialogue would contribute to the global discussion and answer the following questions from an Nigerian perspective. One, how can we finance the development transformation that we have envisioned in the 2030 SDG agenda in addressing the multiple layers of the challenges we face from the poverty challenge to the gaps in the education sector, poor health, infrastructure, deficits, and climate finance. But more importantly, how can we lead discussions that will inform global dialogue that will take into consideration Nigeria's budget deficit, the debt burden, and of course, create an investment for future generations. The trio of Mrs. Tony Bashir of Perbeck, Mr. Aziz Alatoye of Ascension Consulting Services, and 
Mr. Adewale Ajayi of KPMG discussed Mrs. Atayuru's paper. In a population of about 200 million plus, we have several challenges, but um, one of the critical ones is the infrastructure gap. It's been reported that Nigeria requires about 80 billion to about 100 billion dollars annually, uh, possibly over a 10 year period to be able to essentially bridge the infrastructure gap. This has led to review of taxation as possibly a vital tool which can play a significant role in Nigeria's future development. Nigeria has one of the lowest tax revenues in the world as a share of GDP. Now this is even in spite of the remarkable strides that have been accorded by the Federal Inland Revenue Service under the leadership of course of the Executive Chairman Mr. Mohamed Nami who in the first instance he realized 6.405 trillion naira in 2021, and then followed it in the following year in realizing about 10.1 trillion in 2022. Now, um, as, an, as a council, having collaborated with the Federal Inland Revenue Service on quite a number of reform efforts, we recognize and of course commend the innovative strides deployed by the executive chairman in achieving this improvement. So it would seem that to some extent, collection of tax seems to have improved, but then again we see that Nigeria still has left quite a lot of the money on the table. And so to achieve the requisite level of sustainable development, therefore means that Nigeria definitely needs to diversify its tax base and increase tax compliance. The paper presenter actually posed two questions. Number one of it is to address the challenge of education. I want to stop on that. Are we trying to address the challenge of education when in all countries of the world, education industry is being subsidized? But Finance Act of 2021 had eliminated educational sectors of public character from being exempted from income tax. So how do we achieve sustainable development goal in the next seven years, when we are taxing education sector. I may mean, really want to conduct a poll as to whether we want education sector to be subjected to 30% income tax. So may I recommend to our president and the incoming president, Barista Agbeluyi, and our past president to lead a very powerful delegation including the chairman of the federal inland revenue service to go to the presidency and the national assembly that this is the, not, not the right direction to go if we actually want to join the team of the sustainable development goal that we want to achieve we need to strengthen and increase the effectiveness of the nigerian tax system right. that is the key message and then the question of course is if we don't strengthen that how are you going to be able to mobilize the domestic revenue that we need to be able to achieve the SDG. If we do not mobilize domestic revenue, we cannot provide the basic services that we need. The only feasible way is taxes. We all know that when it comes to taxes, it's probably the most secured, the most reliable source of state revenue. The tax gap is getting wider, despite the achievement that um, the FRS has recorded. And so the question is, how do we deal with that problem? When you look at the 2023 budget, there is about 11 trillion in deficit, or close to about 5% of our GDP. Last year, it was 4%. We all know that the threshold we have set was 3%. Now we're having 5% you know, of our GDP in deficit. For us to be able to achieve sustainable development transition in Nigeria, we need to have a comprehensive approach that must involve, number one, transparency. Our tax policy must be very effective. The number three, we must have a policy that addresses the issue of the environment. How do we protect the environment? And lastly, public trust. Without public trust, we can't get anywhere. The panel session was rounded off with the audience participation in the form of questions, observations, and answers. Interesting, isn't it? Food for thoughts, real food for thoughts. And that leads us to part three of the ongoing documentary on Nigeria's economic diversification, tax revenue as a key factor. Like we said last week, 
there is a convergence of thoughts, a convergence of goals and objectives between the theme of the 25th Annual Task Conference and the title of the documentary. What efforts are being made to shore up Nigeria's revenue base? What needs to be done? It is really agreed that taxes remain a veritable source of revenue for any self-respecting country desirous of progress and her independence. How do we go about this? Taxpayer enumeration is key. Having identified taxpayers, the various revenue generating agencies have stepped up efforts to shore up revenue. Various strategies have been mapped out to get taxation onto the front burner. Taxation is an exercise of sovereignty. So a sovereign must know the identities of those who reside within its territory. He must know when they come in and when they go out. That's the reason why you require visa before you go to foreign lands. And they want to know what the purpose of your visit and for how long. So it's important to know those who reside in all our geographical areas, state, local government and federal. And in order to effectively tax the entities in the Nigeria economy, we need to give them numbers called tax identification number, both for the individuals and for the corporate entities. When we are able to number every taxable entity in Nigeria, we will be able to have adequate projection of the revenue we are expected to generate through taxing these entities. Taxpayers identification number identifies you, first of all, as an entity doing business. That should bring you into TaxNet. When that brings you into TaxNet, it increases the tax base. Now that tax base is now to be analyzed. Do you fall within the minimum tax that is not supposed to pay taxes? You will be eliminated if you do. If you do not, this money that you have, how much have you paid as tax? And the informal sector, most of them do business as individuals. Some of them are not even registered. We need to know how many people are in the pool. And if we get to know this number of people are in the poll, they'll be able to know, oh, they've actually contributed X, Y amount into the poll. Efforts being made to shore up revenue. And we need more from taxes. Because if we were getting enough taxes, we won't be borrowing at the rate at which we are borrowing. But having said that, the quantum of taxes that we are collecting have increased. From 2015 to date, it has almost doubled. The um, challenge is our expenditure also has expanded. In 2015, the budget size just before the president took over was, was about uh, 5 trillion. Now the 2021 budget is 13.8 trillion, so it, it's more than doubled. So while the revenue was growing, the expenditure was growing as, at a much faster rate. And also, the president has clarity of what he wanted to do. He wanted to build out major infrastructure, and that takes a lot of money. And it's important that it is done now, because that is what we need for the country to grow on a sustainable basis going, going forward. So we're making huge investments in critical infrastructure like power, water, roads, rail airports. These are infrastructure that are necessary for businesses to, uh, to really grow in the Nigerian economy. We have actually done a lot and that's why we have even come up with a special tax department. What we are trying to do with that department, this is the department that will sit, think of which areas do we explore as far as non-oil sources are concerned. And they are coming up with issues like I-24, Interpol uh, monies that Nigeria has been losing, which constitute about 10, 15, 20 percent of some some entities, territory, uh, countries' uh, GDP. 
that we've been losing before now. You know that Nigerians travel a lot. Even if you go to the markets in Dubai, in China, you think you are in Nigeria uh, market. So these are monies that Nigeria should have ordinarily be getting as part of the deposit that this, uh, the travelers are making for crimes relating to ICT, crimes relating to arms, that if you do not take the money today, tomorrow when you go back, Interpol will tell you you have lost it because that's the agreement you signed. So we are trying to deploy technology now to connect with Interpol so that as Amaka move out to Nigeria for, his, for her holidays, maybe in, in Dubai, the 20 30 percent she has paid as part of her ticket, which Nigeria is losing on a daily basis, we get it to support our revenue base. We have arable land to begin with. And, but on the discovery of oil, everybody's attention turned to the oil. We now have cheap money. And so that has really killed doubts, the, 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 the enthusiasm of, of Nigerians to be able to strive for the best in order to survive. We did some kind of survey um, of 20 years and uh, between gas and oil. It's just uh, we have gas up, contributing 5%, while oil 95%. So it's a very, very significant contribution that gas has been making to the economy. Though the Nigeria is seen as more of a gas state than oil, but we have not unlocked the gas aspect. So which government is now trying to concentrate on? Gas is more cleaner. It's a green energy compared to fossil fuel. So our gas is going to um, be a major source of energy in the nearest future. Um, with that, Nigeria may become, we now have more resources from gas than oil. You can see a lot of programs that government, policy government is bringing up. We have this uh, gas master plan um, that has been, that was launched recently and that um, even most vehicles um, are going to convert to the usage of gas, being a cleaner, a cleaner energy than fossil fuel. So developing that, um, it, is, it requires a lot of investment. And we need to give a lot of physical incentives and even the governance to the gas you know, uh, industry to encourage um, the investment in that sector. The way government is looking at it and taking steps now definitely is going to be in the, uh, cont contribute more to the Nigerian economy than oil in the nearest future. Uh, that does not mean that oil is going to be totally uh, useless. It's going to be used for other purposes, but it will not be as predominant as it is now. We are deepening gas consumption from all prongs, gas to industries, gas to power, and now very recently we are doing gas to automobiles. The combination of this is with creation of new businesses, empowering of existing businesses and creating new opportunities. That it means that you are going to create new wealth. Once wealth is created, taxation will increase. All other forms of uh, government revenue sources will naturally increase, including value added tax. The things actually we've done was to look at our internal processes and also the processes that we're implementing for our service provider. In the internal process, we looked at our financial management system. We also looked at our payroll system and um, we tried to provide IT solutions in order to actually modernize these uh, uh, processes these processes and aside from this, we now looked at our tax payment administration system starting from the deployment of the web portal. We have the web portal actually, which actually is, a, is an online real-time collection monitoring system. We also have an integration with uh, third-party service providers. We have a um, collection with uh, the tax payment, the payment platform application providers. And um, we also make sure actually for our team, we make our team for the users to actually be uniquely identified. We wanted a full automated system whereby we can start capturing the life cycle of a taxpayer from the day they register as a taxpayer up until the request because ultimately we want to request for their tax clearance certificate. Over and above that, when they pay for their um, for the tax liability, they want to be able to issue the receipt. They want to also, for that receipt to be trans, because it's a transaction, but especially the withholding tax, they want to be issued their credit notes, which they will use to offset their corporate income tax when they file. 
So that life cycle, there was a need to capture it automatically and even to pay without uh, paying online, without the interference of tax officials. Over and above that, what is key? Is taxpayer making any payment? That payment that the taxpayer is making, what process, which is assessment, before getting to that final figure that you have established a liability for the taxpayer? Before you even uh, talk of um, making tax as bedrock for achieving um, sustainability of, of uh, non-oil sector to run the economy to, to be the pillar of economy, it is important to also look at other factors or, or other um, enabling uh, components. First, you, you look at the uh, investment uh, activities, either internal or external, that is how much of our uh, resources are put in, in on, or focus on investment and how much of foreign investment are we also getting. These are all dependent on the environment. Implementation strategies. In looking at the economy, how best can we also as custom be able to contribute? And that's, that's what uh, eventually emanated into the reduction of duty and levies on vehicles. Transportation is one of our biggest problems in Nigeria. Most of the rising cost of goods in Nigeria today is as a result of transportation. Because if you are to move goods from Lagos to Kaduna on a trailer, you know how much you pay. In addition to that, the old our haulage vehicles are almost dead. By the time you hire a vehicle from Lagos to bring your goods to, to Kaduna, it will spend two weeks because it dies on the way. So we now looked at it and said, how best can we contribute? If we reduce the levies and duties on these vehicles, it, it would then mean that those who bring in this vehicle will bring in better performing vehicles. We need to have improvement in product uh, uh, complexity uh, because agri, for, for instance, seems to still be in its primitive stage. And uh, I say primitive because a lot of it has to do with raw materials. But when we begin to process, when we begin to store, when, when we begin to add value to it, that's when we make more money. And that's when your product becomes sellable. And that's where your forex will come in. So the agric that we have today that uh, is basically raw, raw, raw materials to feed ourselves and raw materials to take out, we are not getting the true value that we should, we should get. I think we should learn from our mistake in the past. We should not forget other sectors that can also support, that we call it support. Agriculture is still there. And we have solid minerals. Solid minerals is still untapped. We have not even touched it at all. We offer them low interest rates. We offer them training. We offer them equipment. In return, they must formalize, come into cooperatives. When they come together as cooperatives, we recognize them. And when they're recognized by government, with all the incentives government is giving, all the largest government is giving to them, then they can now pay the revenue due, which is the reality to government. And this, of course, beginning to yield results. So our contribution to the economy, of course, is improving uh, with this approach. Uh, furthermore, uh, because government is now focusing on mining as one of the ways to diversify the economy, is attracting foreign interest. Investors are coming to Nigeria uh, to do exploration and all that uh, in the former sector. Uh, the major businesses within the ABA uh, economic ecosystem, uh, just um, garments and everything about garment, from weaving to tailoring, you know, then the shoe and leather industry is also very strong. The third one is uh, fabrication, metal fabrication, creating things, spares for heavy duty equipment and all of that. That happens around the Potakotu that exists. Then uh, we are also very, very strong in terms of trade and commerce. So ABA has uh, about 15 markets. In fact, um, uh, the whole of ABA today is threatened by a single by market. The ABA has become a marketing place, the intensity. We are looking at so many other options, including the fact that we are making a uh, case for taxes or kind of way we are going to uh, 
collect something from the informal sector that they use infrastructures, e.g. road that is constructed with taxpayer money and yet they don't pay taxes. You cannot own 30, 40, 50 trailers and you use them to uh, transport goods from Lagos, transport the finished product from maybe uh, Dongote Smith in Obajana to Kanu, Ibadan and elsewhere, yet the owner of those stores don't pay one cobalt to, to government as taxes. Number two, we have now seen that there is opportunity in stamp duty. So we have now transferred the management of that tax type to special tax department. Taxpayer enumeration, diversification of the base, that is upscaling other sectors like agriculture, like mining, and of course, the use of technology. Next episode on the last installment, we'll be looking at implementation strategies, how to get Nigerians to voluntarily pay taxes, among other efforts being made to diversify Nigeria's revenue base. Thank you for watching. Next week is another date, same day of the week, and of course, STEAM Station. Bye for now.